Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Blueprint Creation Series. In today's episode, we're going to be showing you how you can create a simple countdown timer inside of Unreal Engine. So if you have a quick look in my viewport, you can see I've got a timer in the top middle and it's counting down from 15 seconds and when it gets down to zero, you're going to see it ends the game, it tells the player it's game over and then from there we can add whatever end game functionality we want. So you can see it's paused it as soon as it got down to zero, there was a little pop up in the top left hand corner just a little print string to tell us that the game is over and that's exactly what we're going to be creating today now this is just going to be a foundation for your games especially if you're working with a game or a game mode that works around you know a countdown like a time attack mode or a survival mode something like that i don't know it's entirely up to you but this episode is going to give you the functionality to you know work with a basic countdown system in the previous episode, I showed you how to create a simple game match timer, which counts up. And uh, we also show you how you can get that all displayed on the HUD. If you haven't watched it, you really should go ahead and check out how we do that. As you know, it's going to, as it shows you actually how to get the counter onto the screen and uh, onto the screen and stuff like that. What I'm going to be doing in today's episode is I'm just going to be playing around with some of the script that we did in the last episode and uh, you know, just making it count down and then end the game once it gets to zero. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and open up the place where all of our information for our timer is stored. Like I said, we store all of this in our game mode because it's really easy to get to. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my game mode. For me, that's going to be third person game mode. So just find it in your content browser, open it up, and let's have a look. So you can see I've got my old counting up script here, and this is also a script that I've just created for the new counting down system. It's slightly longer because I've also got conditioning for when it gets down to zero, it's going to end the game and stuff. Um, but for the most part, the rest of it is going to be exactly the same. So let's go and have a quick run over what we're doing here. So you can see I've got my event tick, and I've got a delay on that. So it only does this once every second, because that's the only time we really need to change these values. So the first thing I do, you can see I, can, I set the seconds value down to, uh, my, to minus one, because it's counting down. Previously, I was just doing a plus one because we was counting up. The next thing we do is we check whether or not the value is less than, uh, less than you know, zero. So if it goes below zero, what we want to do is we just want to set the minutes to plus one, or in this case, uh, set the minutes to minus one, and then set the seconds to 59. So it does that loop and it keeps on going and going. It's quite simple really, and hopefully as we're creating this, you should understand the process a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of this. You can also see at the end here, I've also got some basic conditioning, and this is just me checking um, whether both seconds and minutes is zero, and if it is, it just uh, prints a string and then pauses the game. It's very simple. But anyway, let's go ahead and create this. So you need to start off with your event tick node, and like I said, we only want to change these values once every second. So I'm just going to use a delay, and I'm going to set the duration to 1. After this, we need to set the countdown motion, so we pretty much need to make the seconds go down every single second. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the seconds to minus one because we want to, you know, reduce the number of seconds every second. So just type in set seconds, make sure that you've already got your variables, um, make sure they're integers for both seconds and minutes. Like I said, if you haven't seen the last episode, I advise that you go ahead and do so using the thumbnail in the top left hand corner. So you can see I've got these two integers here, one for seconds and one for minutes. I haven't done anything else to those. So here I'm just setting the seconds and I'm just going to set this to integer minus integer and then I'm just going to get a reference to itself. So seconds and what it's going to do here is just going to minus one onto that integer for seconds. So every second now it's going to actually go ahead and get take away one second. So you can see it's going from 15, 12, 13, 11. I also want you to keep in mind that my seconds value, I've set it to 15 by default because this is the way that we set the initial countdown value. So you set it in minutes and seconds. So for me, I've got zero minutes 
and then 15 seconds. If you wanted to, you could set it to 5 minutes and then 0, zero seconds and the script will still work for you. I just set it to 15 seconds because I wanted it to be easily shown in this video. So just go ahead and change that to whatever you want it to be. But for me, I'm just going to leave it to 15 and 0. So now that we've done that, we've got to do some quick condi uh, some conditioning. And all we want to do here is just make sure the value does not go into minus 1, minus 2, and so on and so forth. So what we need to do is we need to check if the value is below 0, and if it is, we just need to set the value uh, back up to 59, and then we also need to set the minutes to minus 1 as well. So let's go ahead and do this. So from branch, go to condition and just drag in integer and just do less than. So integer, less than, integer. And this time, I'm just going to get another reference to seconds. So I'm just going to click it, get the reference, drag it in, and I'm going to make sure that the conditioning here, the value inside of this is zero. So the next thing we need to do is set up the functionality for this uh, conditioning. So if it's not, we don't really want it to do anything right now. But if it is, you know, we just need to go ahead and set the minutes to minus 1 and then the seconds to 59. So let's do this, set minutes. And for this, we're just going to do, once again, integer minus integer. If it's gone down to below 0, that means, you know, a minute has, you know, gone. So what we're going to do is just get the minutes variable and then just set it to minus 1. That's it. And the next thing we need to do is to simply set the seconds up to 59. So just type in set seconds and then just change this little value here to 59. And hopefully now our little countdown timer should be going from, zero, uh, from 15 to 0. And then when it gets down to 0, there is a slight problem. It's going to keep on going to minus values. So what we actually need to do now is check, is do conditioning after all of this to check whether both values are 0. And if it is, we need to end the game. So you can see now it's gone into minus 0. And that's a bit of a problem. So let's set up the functionality for that. So before, I just did two branch nodes, and that was to simply check whether or not the values for seconds and minutes are both equal to zero. And if it is, I'm going to print a string and set the game to pause. And then from there, you can go ahead and, you know, add all of your end game functionality and such. So what I'm going to do is over here, I'm just going to type in branch. And because we want it to happen regardless of whether or not it's gone back to zero, uh, if the seconds have gone to 59 and gone back to 0 or, you know, just normally, I'm just going to hook this branch up to both of these. It just pretty much ensures that it's going to work for us. So under condition, we're just going to do integer. And this time we're going to do equal to because we want to check whether or not both seconds and minutes are set a uh, 0 at the moment. So I'm just going to copy and paste this branch. And I'm also going to copy and paste the equal uh, conditioning node here. And I'm going to hook it both up just like that. And I'm going to get a reference to seconds. And I'm also going to get a reference to minutes as well. There you go. And I'm going to hook that up to A for both of those. So now the next bit will only happen if both of these are true. Don't touch the false nodes. And let's go ahead and do that. So if both of these are true, what I'm going to do is print a string. And then I'm also going to set the game to paused. And like I said, this is just, you know, um, the basis for your end game functionality. All this is going to do is just pause the game, stops everything moving. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and create a widget, um, you know, to say you've died or anything like that. Uh, it's entirely up to you. But anyway, let's go ahead and get set game paused into there. So I'm just going to right click and set game paused. And I'm just going to make sure that's set to true. And I'm also going to change the print string uh, text to game over, you ran out of time. And there we go. So let's go ahead and test this. I'm going to compile it, I'm going to close it, and I'm going to press play. And hopefully now when the value gets down to zero, it should all work for you. So just give it 9 seconds, 8 seconds. While you're waiting for this, feel free to smash the like button. Any problems, just uh, drop a comment. But anyway, here we go. And you can see now when it goes down to zero, it printed the string, it stopped the game, and we can do pretty much anything that we want from here. 
So that's pretty much everything for today's episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, so comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.